Hey guys, JC Ultra Boss here. Welcome back to yet another video where today we are back inside of Subnautica from a while. It's been a while since we played Subnautica. Um, it was actually since um, before I went back, I went on vacation. We still have all our stuff in here. Let me actually uh, three, uh, go to. Uh, wait, hold on. No, it was. Or me. I can't actually see what I'm typing because my uh, what you call thing is like glitched. My like taskbar is like glitched where you can only see it and it doesn't go down even in full screen applications. There is the Phantom Leviathan. Actually, it's called the Ghost Leviathan. I just rather call it the Phantom. Now uh, there's our beautiful Cyclops. Um, don't worry, Phantom Hunter 76. We're gonna do that. Um soon the cyclops thing there's our neptune rocket which is basically just for storage um it's been a while since i played you subnautica glad to be back phantom don't break my base or i'm gonna break you all right <laughs> right so what we're back here for is we are back here to do the rest of the pda um then i'm gonna start a new little thing Welcome aboard, Captain. Thank you. Yeah, so we're going to start like a new series soon. As soon as we finish uh, the PDA thing. And I mean as soon as. Like, I've been wanting to do this for a while. Phantom Hunter 176 has been wanting me to do this for a while. And uh, I'm going to do it. I don't want to open storage. Let me place it. There we go, guys, and I have a lot of fluid analyzers, non-functional ones. Um, well, let me look at my Tory sample analyzer. Yes. Oh, I gotta press just tab. Haven't played this in too long. Microscope non-functional. And another non-functional mi microscope. There we go. How do I get rid of the music? I want to get rid of the music. Ah, uh, no. Guys, I don't know what to do. I want to see if I can fix it. Suggests this may be the migration path of a huge bottom dwelling life form. I think I fixed it. Well, I have to turn down the sound a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to turn down the sound a little bit. Unless we get to like a little voice thing. It's pretty loud for me. I'm not sure if it's too loud for you guys, but uh, here we go. We're going back to. The one, the one Degazi survivor we didn't do. Actually, I think we didn't do a Chief's Log. Yeah, we did this. Dilemma. Ruined. Okay, I'm just going to do the entire uh, um, Paul Torgal. Just, in, just in case. Just in case, guys. Okay? So, I need to turn my volume back up. High as possible. And there we go. Chief's Log. Five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod. Guys, this isn't working. The phantom's just too loud. Oh, this place is just too loud. Um, Biome Islands. This is a nice, peaceful place. Where there's no leviathans to stop the. Voice. Okay, I finally was able to figure this out. Okay, guys, log, here we go. Five weeks since the crash. The only other survivors are my son, Bart, and Mida, the cut price mercenary I commissioned for the journey. After days drifting in the life pod, rain hammering on the roof, the weather cleared and we washed up here. Hmm. I had Mida salvage the Degazi wreck, set Bart to finding us a stable source of food. His education is paying off sooner than I'd anticipated. 
Our only problem is Maida. She says the weather's going to turn. I say she's finding excuses to risk our lives. I imagine she's not going to weaken her life without a physical altercation, and she's itching for a fight. In every judgment she makes, things go from bad to worse. If she had my experience, she'd have more faith. Humans have spent millennia specializing in how to shackle nature to our will. <laughs> this planet won't cause us any new problems. My one task now is to keep us alive as comfortably as possible until the insurance company arranges rescue. In this part of space, that could be months or even years. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That is a. All right, so that's Maroon. That's part one of um Bart. I mean Paul Torgo's log. Just to make sure, because remember this game does cuss sometimes, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to bring that to the minimum. Um, you know what I do, guys? I I, I bleep it out. Well, I don't really know how to bleep it out, so I basically just scream. <laughs> oh, yep. It's definitely a good thing. Do not, guys. If you don't want to see any cuss words, do not look at the. Oh, 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 jeez. Okay, there's two times. So don't look at the words if you don't want to see any bad words. Okay, guys? You know what Maida told me today? She wants to build a habitat 500 meters below sea level, more than a kilometer northeast of here. And she needs Bart and I to do it. She's got it into her head that she can save us if she just acts recklessly enough. But I've hauled Star Wars to Neptune, Plasteel to the Federation. <sighs> this family operates nine different mining colonies across the Ariadne Arm. Maida thinks she's better suited to lead. Her contract still says otherwise. But I just can't <sighs> tell whether it's the stupidest idea I ever heard. I did it, guys. On my only hope. I turned 80 years old last week. I thought I had another 80 in me, but marooned on this planet, there's no swapping out of my liver when the old one fails. Here, I'm mortal. And Maida is useful. So, it's my responsibility to make a decision. Return to the island and hope whatever knocked the Degazi out of the sky won't do the same to the rescue ship. Or take us deeper in search of answers. And all the while be hoping old age gets me before the sea monsters do. I'll give Maida just one thing. She was right about these caves. There's enough lithium there to fabricate a hundred tons of plasteel. Enough for a <sighs> of Cyclops submarine. You did it. There was nothing anyone could have done to avoid crashing here. But I was right to order the detour. If we get off this planet... They'll be talking about the Torgel share price on the other side of the Federation. <laughs> I was able to bleep out all of the bad words. Yes. All right. Let me uh, look for this. All right. Came out of nowhere. Okay. An alien kraken, bigger than a cyclops, tore a hole clear through the reinforced hull. I barely got my breather in time. I told her. I said others would come. The rupture threw me clear of the habitat, and the monster turned and bore down on me. And just as its tentacles came within reach, neither appeared out of nowhere. She had a sea glide in one hand. A jagged piece of scrap metal in the other. She meant to butcher that beast or die trying. The last I saw her, she had the metal lodged in its neck as the monster did its best to shake her, contorting off into the darkness. I'm certain she got her wish, one way or another. Then I thought I saw a light deep below me. I hoped maybe Bart had swum clear. I followed it. Now, I wonder whether I saw anything at all. Our oxygen is low. 
The habitat is gone. I can't see the sky. Something surely has the scent of my blood. Okay, I guess that was a sea dragon. Okay. They got attacked by a darn sea dragon, for goodness sake. That's terrifying. Oh, okay. More, um, uh, voice logs. Man, I love these voice logs because I don't need to read it. <laughs> Alright, I think we're good. We're good, guys. Oh, these are operations logs. Average long range transmission delay, eight hours. Opening last to recorded transmissions. This is an emergency distress call. Aurora is on collision course with planet 4546B. Sending all available environmental data. Please respond with rescue solution out. This is Altera HQ. Attached to this message, you should find the blueprints for an escape ship that we calculate will be capable of breaking orbit and getting you back to the nearest phase gate. Now, it's designed to use materials you can find and sit you, but it's going to need one hell of a power source. Now, we'll be sure I did not see that. Oh, long range communications really offline. Okay, I think I was able to do this. I'm not sure if you heard that. Bad word. I, I missed it. I'm so dumb. I think we're good. Oh, oh, this isn't a uh, voice log anyway. Which means I can turn this down a little bit to the yellow. Alright. You can't see what I'm talking about. The Aurora's dry cord is shielded by a thick metal shell. Which breached in multiple locations shortly after the crash. Once breached, they will continue to leak radiation into the surrounding environment until the breaches are sealed. After that point, the radiation in the environment will dissipate over time. This procedure should only be attempted with appro appropriate radiation protection and a fully charged repair tool. I think that was when we went to the uh, when we went to the Aurora and fixed up the like energy where we had and all the bleeders were around. VR suit log. Okay. <laughs> so this is a uh, VR suit. So they're playing VR. Man, I can't wait to get uh, um, VR. So they're playing VR on the ship. Loading program. Desert Island Drama. Dot Brat. Size three players. Resources normal. Spawning players on the beach. Player one has been washed away by a unusually high tide. Player two has traded a coconut with player three for ten credits. Player three has planted a coconut. Players are getting hungry. Player three has grown a coconut tree. So player three wants to grow a coconut tree. Okay. Player three has eaten a coconut. Player three is no longer <laughs> hung, no longer hungry. Player three has traded a coconut with player two for thirty credits. Player two has eaten a coconut but is still hungry. Player three has traded a coconut. So, oh my gosh, player one was washed away straight away. That's funny. Um, player three has traded a coconut for player two and is themed for building a tent. Um, okay. Player three is sleeping inside their tent. Player two is cold. Night falls. Um, a passing ship is offering trading. Player two has traded 30 credits for a musket. Player 3 has been shot twice in the head while sleeping. Player 2 wins. Player And then Player 2 has died from cold and starvation. <laughs> oh my gosh, he just shot him. He just shot his trading buddy in the head with a musket twice. <laughs> Not cool. That is so mean. That is messed up. That is so messed up, that guy. <laughs> Alright. Altera Alms Pamphlet. Charity is an Arcarac concept with the realism of today's Altarian has rendered obsolete. We understand that, uh, that we are each responsible for ourselves, but the best way to get the most for ourselves is to work together with Altera. By the way, I forgot to mention some of you might not like this video. Because you don't like care about lore, so it's been ten minutes of the video, and I'm sorry about that. I forgot to mention that this time. Well, Terra Arms is trading is a trading uh, training <laughs> academy for those who that 
no, uh, no, that need to be needed. <laughs> need to be needed? We are not a charity because we don't ask for handouts. We prefer to think of ourselves as a philanth philanthropic, which means loving humans, benefit, benefit, fish, I can't even say these words, facilitation service promoting synergy between employer and workforce. Weird. Double A operates on a lottery system. <laughs> what? Philanthropic. I know, I know what philanthropic means, Dad. But thanks. Like oh yeah, thank you. I mean, my dad says it means very giving. By investing a number of credits, you'll be entered into a prize or a larger investments yield higher, 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 higher chances of winning. Your credits go toward training unskilled colonists with vital tasks such as maintenance and interpersonal skills. The colonists receive this training voluntarily and free of charge um, and on, I mean, on condition of a minimum contract with one of our investors and the completion of their training. And then Altera launches the Aurora. Phase gate announced for the Aridan arm. Altera launches the Aurora. The furthest research is uh, re reaches <laughs> of inhibited space are due to expand as Altera Corp launches newly constructed capital ship carrying a phase gate bound for the Aridane arm, whatever that is. Um, the Aurora will travel from a space dock on the edge of Altera space, making hundreds of consecutive phase gate jumps through nine different transgov authorities and arrive on the far side of the Aridane arm in three months' time. From there, the command crew will pilot the ship on beyond the final phase gate, arriving in the next solar system with approximately 18 months later. Uh, approximately 18 months later, there an elite team of engineers will begin a six-month construction project on the new phase gate, a multi-trillion credit investment. Jeez. In the absence of existing infrastructure in the region, the vessel is equipped with advanced thermal nuclear power facilities. Okay. Awesome. Altera Corp currently operates 9% of all phase gates in the galaxy. If Aurora's mission is successful, Altera will have uh, outmaneuvered a cable, a cabal, whatever that means, a cable, I, I don't know how to pronounce that, of Mongolian corporations operating a range of outposts and mines in the region. Alright, Corporal... Corporate file Torgal Corp. So Torgal is like Paul Torgal. That's his name, you know. The Gazi. Torgal Corp Corporation is a long-standing family-run clan that operates almost a dozen mining and trading operations. Um, the company share price hit a uh, all-time an all-time high on the announcement by a Mongolian cabal, I guess, uh, of their intention to construct a new phase gate. Using Torgal materials, utilizing Torgal materials, these plans were put on hold while Bart Torgal, the intended leader of a new mining operation, disappeared along with his father, um, roughly a decade ago. So uh, they've crashed on four, five, four, six B, whatever you call this crazy plan. Uh, join Altera's board of directors. It's not about money. That's what every director of Altera's board has told me, and I believe them. Profitability is just an interim measure of success. Power and status are the real goals. Make enough profit for Altera Corporation, and you'll be recognized by the most powerful business people in the universe. Establish a company that obliterates the competition, and a after compulsory buyout, you can be promoted in the board of directors. Perks include travel, free of um, company phase gate, free use of pump of um, company phase gates. I don't even know what a phase gate is, but okay. Entourage, personal assistance for every facet of your life. What does that mean? Oh, every area. That's what my dad says. Thanks, Dad. Longevity, automatic organ replacement. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, uh, that's what um, Paul Torgo was talking about. I can't get a new liver. And uh, Altera, get what you deserve. Okay. I'm joining Altera, guys. I don't care what you say. Oh, jeez. Oh, but this looks funny, guys. Is it? Is this a love story or something? I'm not 100% sure. Let me read it just to make because it's a voice thing. I just want to make sure. Sorry. 
So this is between Wilson, the boy, and Ellie, him, the girl. I guess I'm just making sure there's no cussing in the in the talk. Okay, guys, if you're not interested in love stories, skip till you see responsible. Oh, jeez, I'm not sure. Auto, auto relationships. Okay, I'm not sure if this is real. Why is this in? Oh, this is. Why is this in pu public documents? By the way. All right, guys, if you're not interested in this stuff, then don't listen to it. <laughs> Um, just for anyone that is interested in this kind of stuff, here we go. Listen, I know I don't have the right to make demands of you, but I need well, to a girl? understand that I want to change our arrangement. I hear what you're saying, and I will try to respect it. How would you like to change it? They're both girls? I would like to reduce our contact hours. How much further can we do that? To zero. You're dumping me. I'm changing the terms of our relationship. Okay. How is it still a relationship if we don't see each other? It's a relationship of a kind. You have so many expectations. Okay. I feel you just want to spend more time with that dumb guy in his dumb robot suit. That's not a feeling. It's a judgment. And I feel hostility in what you're saying. Perhaps your jealousy is a sign that you need to take another look at your business model. What? Why can't you just be happy for me? I am happy for you, and I'm happy for all the guys in the prawn bay. I'm just not happy for me. This is why I want to change our arrangement. Okay, I have no idea what they're talking about. But, uh, okay. This is no voice, so I'm going to turn this back down. So, all the other birds and things. Sky rays aren't annoying. Okay, responsible autonomous relationships. Forward by Jenny Eckhart. All the good things in life are commodities. We trade love. Okay. If you, this is a love story as well. So, uh, if you don't like this, go to today's menu. Alright. All the things in good life are commodities. We trade love just as we buy and sell stock. What is wrong with these people? We engage in human relationships when there is a fair exchange of value, support, motivation, and affection. Nothing good is ever free. What does this mean? If every physical good in the Federation came from a single supplier, it would con con constitute a dangerous monopoly. Personal relationships are the same. Okay, I don't understand. It is important for people to get what they need from multiple sources. Is it talking about, uh... Please don't tell me it's talking about multiple wives, because that is wrong. Completely wrong. And it's never a good thing to have multiple wives. The Bible is completely against it. And, uh, from what I've seen, and, you know, what I know, the Bible's always right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Not, for, not just from what I know. I know that the Bible is always right, so this is wrong, I think. But let me just make sure if this is actually saying that. If a person finds better source of the goods they require they are not wronging their original supplier by changing purse and purchasing arrangements oh are they talking about like divorcing and no no it's not good to divorce god is against that too unless like your person like trying to kill you or something you know then you might it might be okay to divorce if they're trying to kill you um it would make sense <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you don't usually want a divorce, ever. You're basically breaking your vows. This is bad. I don't like this. Okay. Um, if a person... Uh, okay. If one member of a relationship should feel threatened or jealous, they must look at their own business model. <laughs> as whether as performing competitively. There's always room for improvement. Really? Business has nothing to do with relationships. This is just stupid. Today's menu. Starter. Space Bear Vluth? Since their introduction to the interstellar vacuum. By the way, this is another, this is a new one. It's about food. In the 21st century. This is still the 21st century. Everything got so advanced since 2000s. Wait, it still is the 2000s. <laughs> that means. Or, uh. 21st century microscopic target degrades or space bears have adapted and um, flourished where no other life forms have survived. 
um, condensed into a smooth, nutty, protein-rich soup. They are the freshest local ingredient available to travelers on a long-haul space flight. Flight? Ew. Well, who would want to eat space bear soup? That, that's disgusting. Main cottage pie or nutrient block? I'm taking the nutrient block. Rehydrated minced beef and its own gravy served with topping of mashed Chinese potato <laughs> picked fresh this morning from on board grow beds. And a sight of sautéed Chinese potato plant leaves for the first time co conscious consumer. The usually nutrient the usual nutrient block options are also available. They may be consumed cold or reconsidered on eyesight on re con recon su situated on the on site fabricator. Dessert dried fruits and nuts. If that's dessert, I can't wait. I, c I couldn't. T t we really. I really couldn't see. You. I don't even know what to say. That that that's the worst. That, that's not even dessert at all. Noobs. Oh my goodness, these people are ridiculous. <laughs> Unfortunately, a recent accident in Cargo Bay Three involving incorrect application of a repulsion cannon. Cannon. I'm sorry. In combination with the modified uh, battery charger, resulted in venting into space of all dehydrated desserts. Fruits and nuts will be the only available dessert for the next 39 weeks. So the repulsion cannon knocked all the desserts into the space. <laughs> That's funny. TransGov profile, Altera Corp. Let me make sure this is still down. How long have I been doing this? About I haven't even been doing this for 30 minutes. My dad's like, come on, get off. Well, not exactly, but... Uh, only been 27 minutes. Well, wow. Man, they really must be wanting me to do something. I don't understand why, but... Okay. Um, here we go. One of the largest suppliers in space-faring technologies and consumer electronics in the Federation... The original supplier of the TSF consistently ranked amongst the galaxy's best employers began life as a defense manufa manufacturer in the mid 22nd century. National motto, get what you deserve. Okay. <laughs> Although most trans govs, I, I honestly don't even know what that means by the way, um, can trace their roots back to Earth. Altera, literally meaning by Earth is the only one brazen enough to take its name. During the expansion, Altera supplied arms to all sides, acquiring and housing a vast colonist workforce, and making the transition from manufacturer to corporate state. Where are we? Um, Altera th Altera's threat to cease trade was one of the turning points in the conflict, bringing about the end of hostilities and signing of the Charter. Okay, I don't know what that means. Um, free enterprise within Altera's space is encouraged, but competition is tight, and all goods exported off-world must be Altera branded. Profitable businesses are brought bought out by the state owners, ascending the board of directors. Well-known Altera technologies like the Cyclops Submersible originated with such private enterprises. Despite the superficial similarities to national governments, the corporation's lawyers have always maintained that there is no legal obligation to its employees. In quotation marks, but voluntarily elects to take on the roles usually served by a democratically elected government. This claim has not been yet tested in Federation courts. In the final public document, until we get on to deal. <laughs> geological data and after that indigenous life forms which is the great part the good part I mean there are a lot of good parts in this but I think they will be the best part transgov um, profile Mongolian independent states I can't wait till these uh, um public documents are over you can skip if you want by the way guys it's maybe a little bit late because if you're not interested in public documents like I'm not 
then just go on to geological data if I will get that in time. When the hostilities of the expansion ceased, the tactical value of the hard to reach colony systems on edge on the edge of China territories plummeted. Recouping from the war, the central gov um, go government left them to left. Oh, well, I forgot where I was. No, oh, left them to starve. Why would they leave them to starve? You fools! Gosh, that's so mean. The systems in question declared independence, claiming their infrastructure as their own and their intent to become self-sufficient. Today, the Mongolian states is seen as. A rev uh, relatively <laughs> minor, minor power in the outskirts of colonized space, yet it remains of one of the fastest expanding transgovs in the galaxy. Mongolian societies inherited their technologies from the Chinese, but incorporate but incorporated in the the customs of their multicultural colonist base. Non-synthetic foods remain popular. Religion is a strong component of society, but the Mongolians take a relaxed view of competing faiths, believing gods to be universally and equally flawed. They're all flawed because they're not real, you guys! Only God, like, God, like, capital G-O-D, is the only God that even exists! Learn it already, people! Learn it! Come on! Come on, Subnautica! Have some Christian stuff in here! They literally don't have one thing about Christianity in here, which makes me a little bit mad. No, I'm just kidding. Well, yeah, a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I honestly find that upsetting, but okay. Anyway, we're on to the fun stuff. Geological data. Maybe it's not the fun stuff. Alright, guys, I think we're gonna do, um, geological data, and then we'll do all the indigenous life forms. Well, maybe, um, in the next video. My dad and I just did Jinx because he really wants me to get off soon. So we're going to do geological data, and that's pretty much it. Luckily, this should be a little bit short, so my parents aren't mad at me. Crater Edge. Geological scans of this area show steep decline in all directions. This data is consistent with a theory that the aurora crashed on the edge of this 2 um, kilometers times 2 kilometers um, a volcanic crater. It, uh, it has likely been millennia a uh, millennia since uh, eruption reached the surface encouraging the ecosystem within the crater to flourish the ecology of the trends um, surrounding the crater supports only two kinds of like microscopic and leviathan <laughs> leviathan class exploration is ill advised so don't go to crater I guess that's where the aurora is unless you're coming to the aurora all right, crystalline sulfur. Sulfur is a highly reactive non-metallic element, usually found in abundance on the ground. Common applications include the production of acidic compounds and combustibles. Assessment essential for advanced fabrication. I guess it's like cave sulfur from like the crash fish. All right. Limestone outcrops, these unusual geological structures often form around titanium and copper deposits and are distinct to this planet. Closer analysis reveal on the stone around the metal has been hardened against erosion but the mechanism remains unknown. Assessment, titanium and copper source. That's uh, pretty much the first thing you'll ever do in Subnautica once you get out. You go and break a limestone outcrop. Magnetite. Magnetite is an iron oxide, oxide <laughs> valued for its um, magnetic potential against other qualities. That's why it's called magnetite. It is used in many federation technologies, including sonar and torpedo systems. Ass uh, assessment essential for all advanced fab. N not all advanced fabrication. All right. Interesting. Ruby. Okay, a uh, hard blood red gemstone um, made of aluminum oxide. Rubies may be processed in order um, to leverage their structural integrity in advanced vehicle construction and modification. So I guess it's used for doing the Cyclops or something. Assessment essential for advanced fabrication. I'm not very good with advanced fabrication. I've ne I've only been in simple Subnautica barely ever like I've on the farthest I've ever been in Subnautica um like normal Subnautica is I might have 
I might have gone to the Aurora Crater once, but I think, but if not that, it was the grassy um, plains. I, I know I've been to the, the shallows because it's the first place you go all the time. And the kelp forest I've been to as well, but only when I'm getting um, stuff because I hate those stalkers. I'm also terrified of going to the Reaper Leviathan territory as well. Anyway, sandstone, sandstone outcrops. <laughs> These common por por uh, porous outcrops seem to form around small amounts of precious materials or otherwise these metals oh, I'm sorry m m precious metals or otherwise these materials are part of a sedimentary build up over time assessment lead silver and gold gold source all right scattered wreckage analysis forms and confirms this wreckage from the aurora outer layers of materials have oxidized suggesting it's been heated over one thousand two hundred celsius that is insane guys um because that's like made of like titanium and it's been it's been singed it's been oxidized goodness this pattern is consistent with whole disintegration during at atmospheric entry salvage of intact proportions of altera vessels is prohibited at legal moral and tech nickel levels. However, scraps such as these may be reclaimed for their titanium content at any Altera fabricator. Now, shale outcrops are pretty much the most valuable outcrop you can find. Has the most valuable stuff. Gold, lithium, and diamond source. That's an assessment. Let's read the description. This sedimentary rock is formed around flakes of clay materials inside which rare materials such as lithium can be found. Um, geological conditions on this planet mean it tends to be found in deeper biomes. Now, the final one. Ur uranite. Ur ur uraninite. For, it says assessment applications in nuclear power this is going to be our last one right now because it's been 37 minutes in the video so then we're gonna have to end the video here and we'll do indigenous life forms later well next video alright guys well here we go urine uraninite is naturally occurring um, uranium oxide oxidide highly radioactive and unstable its primary use is the production of um, uranium reactor rods in, for nuclear generators. Now, guys, that is the end of this episode of reading PDA. I basically just sit down and read the PDA. You guys, you guys might find it boring. I find it boring sometimes. Um, but um, it can have some really interesting information. And look at my beautiful solar panel right here. So if you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and like uh, subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Make sure you check out Phantom Hunter 176, my boy, and my other boy, my, um, Ultra Screen Boss, and yet my other boy. <laughs> okay, what am I doing? Um, what should we call it? Uh, uh, the Chaz Man. Please check out their videos because they are awesome. And they're a little unknown YouTubers, kind of like I am. I'm kind of unknown, but I'm getting more and more known. Um, so, uh, yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you guys for um, anyone who has subscribed. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channels. You guys are the best. I love you guys. Um, I'm not sure if you love me. Please do. I'm just kidding. Because actually, in the Bible, it actually tells us all to love. I'm not kidding, the Bible, I mean, it may seem kind of hard for, like, a doof nugget like me, but, uh, I'm to love me, you know, because I'm ter I'm stupid, no, I'm not. <laughs> Alright, guys, so, anyway, I've kind of gone a little bit far. Let's go. We're done here. Okay, guys, Bye bye Let me save, and we're done here. Bye.